Ladies and gentlemen, Tactical Vance here, and welcome to a FPS update. Now, we've just recently had the latest Around the Verse video. It did seem pretty orientated around the FPS aspect of it. I'm just going to run through what I actually picked up from that. Squadron 42, the long and short of it, the FPS module was going to define how that actually works and obviously moving into the persistent universe as well. And that is ground-based and EVA. One of the biggest challenges they've had, and we actually sort of originally saw this in one of my previous videos, and I've put it in here today as well. When I originally saw the character an animations, although I was actually really, really impressed with the way that the character moved forward, it's fair to say that it was real. And what I mean is it wasn't created by a PC, they were real mocap animations of someone running forward. And that's why it looks so good. But one of the challenges you could definitely see in that video was the stop on the start of that animation. If you record an animation, you run forward and then you go right stop. And then you record another animation of strafing sideways. The problem is, is when you run forward and then you choose to run back immediately, there needs to be some sort of transitional animation between that process of moving between the animations and you could see that and that's basically what's been the sort of the main blocker on the FPS side and there is some good news as well actually what well, I think is good news anyway the idea is is actually to add sort of weight to the character so the character's movement actually looks real you know rather than some of these FPS games where you know you're like a floating head if anything and there's no stop and start motion so when you run forward it's instant stop uh, and run when you run sideways and forwards and then move into a crouch position you know it's very sort of fast paced and not realistic actually how a character would move and i think a lot of this is definitely subject to gameplay mechanics so if it becomes like you run out around a corner and the transition between the animation between you going back the other way you know you run forward two feet and then you die every time maybe that they will make an adjustments to that to make it more playable as a game and remove some of the realistic aspects of it. And I think in some cases, I think there's got to be a bit of a balance between full simulation and it's a game. So the good news is, well, I think this is good news. Because this motion stop start has caused the sort of bit of a delay, what that means for FPS as an entirety, all the other developers that are working on it that are not working on the stop and, stop and start are either working on testing it from a testing point of view. There's only limited sort of testing they can do because obviously they can only test internally. So they can only probably test between, let's say a maximum between 10 and 50 people. And I'll be surprised if they achieve 50, but maybe they do some events internally to try and get as many people online. But the big advantage here is, is all them other guys that are not doing the stop and start, they've got now the time to revisit and maybe fix some of the things that they might have let slide originally. And I think this is why that Star Citizen are keep mentioning that this is going to be a lot more polished. I think the polish definitely comes from the delay of the stop start, thus giving the other developers more time to go over actually physically what they've done and make it even better. I believe we will get something polished, as in visually, but will we actually get something polished as in load-wise? Because obviously when we're going to start ramping up and putting loads of players in there, the environment's going to act totally different. A few videos ago, I did actually mention that the matchmaking system is going to be rebuilt. The first example of that will actually be inside the FPS uh, module. Now, the reason for this was, is originally they used a matchmaking system in Arena Commander, but it just didn't work out, basically. The matchmaking, there was matchmaking issues. The matchmaking logic there really didn't really fit what Star Citizen really wanted to do. So rather than actually go to Arena Commander now and implement this new system, it seemed logical to say, right, look, let's leave that working now. It's functioning. Let's not break something else. Let's implement it into the FPS aspect of it and roll it out on there. And then once that's successful, then they can go straight over to Arena Commander. Now, I'm not quite sure when the FPS drops, actually, if it will be rolling out to both at the same time. As far as I'm aware, it's only going to be one. Now, the matchmaking system, what it would actually do, it would actually make, match you on the player skill, I believe. So, I sort of see it in a tiering system, the way I thought about it, right, player skill, well, let's just, we don't know what their ranking system is, but let's just say my player skill is six, right, and it's out of 10. I'm assuming that it matched me maybe two lower, one higher, and then obviously a exact match. And then if I'm tier one, it would match me tier one and three higher. Something on the lines of that. That's what I'm thinking. Or maybe it's, it could be basic logic like that on how the actual matchmaking works. 
But I suppose then obviously you've got to actually look at player statistics and performance to calculate the physical tier. I think it's got to happen because what you don't want to do, particularly when you're building a game, is go through this whole process of building the game and then someone new comes into the game, they buy a, a ship because a lot of games actually fail because of they're not intuitive enough for new players coming into the game. It's got to be intuitive, it's got to be enjoyable. You know, if someone comes in and they're a useless player and they just get owned every time, that's not necessarily going to encourage the person to continue playing that game. And that actually affects us. I mean, if, if that person doesn't carry on playing the game, they might not spend any more money. And if they don't spend any more money, Star Citizen don't make any more money from that player, so they lose. And we actually lose as well, because if that player spends the money, then we get that back as in more assets, more modules, more DLCs, and so on and so on. So it's a win-win if more user-friendly and more intuitive and fairer, I think. Uh, for new players as well and people actually playing right now. Now I suppose the biggest news of all really is how it's actually going to be rolled out because probably more important for me, actually it's been more important for everyone isn't it, let's be honest. I mean it's going PTU first, for the, for the people who don't know what that is, there's two branches of Star Citizen, there's the main branch you could call it, which is the live branch, and then you have the PTU and that's basically the test branch before it goes live. Now what they did with Arena Commander, they, they didn't actually do the PTU idea because it was before this, but because there was nothing to affect there, was there? Because we didn't have a game at all, but they're not going to do it now on the main branch because it just messed things up. So keeping it separate makes total sense to me. So the plan would be to roll it out on the PTU. They're going to roll it out based on your citizen number. I'm expecting, I'm thinking FPS, how many would I roll out? I'll probably go a thousand on the first on the first day just go really small you know what I mean just see how it, because you've only tested it with 50 people before you might even go 500 to a thousand all depending on what that feedback is whether it's yep that was successful no it wasn't then you make that decision and start ramping up and maybe you start ramping up in tens of thousands to 50 and then ramp up in hundreds and obviously deal with them bugs you have at the same time now one thing that's been also been made quite clear as well is in that PTU period there will be patches maybe one two three times a week now then patches could consist of a complete download of the game again keep in mind guys that although the fps will be coming out on the ptu keep in mind that it's there for a reason it's there for physical testing and make sure that it's stable for when it goes live it's a little bit unfortunate that the people who are not necessarily interested in the ptu will have to sort of wait even longer really probably have to wait maybe could be I'm guessing a month, a month and a half, let's just say. Could be two months. All I'm thinking is in the current state, the feeling I'm getting from the current videos is they're two weeks away maybe of getting something out there. That's my opinion and it's a guesstimate clearly. And I think once that goes on to the, the PTU, so I'm thinking at least a month, at least, for them to deal with the issues that they're going to have because there's bound to be something not working. The chance of them physically rolling out and, and then scaling up to a million people in the space of a month it'd be i'll be very surprised so there's sort of good news and bad news but it's, it's progression at the end of the day and i think that we've just all got to be patient because all of these sort of assets pulling together i have actually always seen arena commander and the fps is not the game at all i've always seen that as a development plan from rsi to get to the point of the persistent universe and squadron 42 so this is just proof of concept of flight mechanics, proof of concept of FPS and EVA. And that's, that, that's the way I see it. And probably you guys would probably see it in the same light in some instance, because when we go into the game, these modes will be virtual reality, you know, and, and reality will be the persistent universe and Squadron 42. We had the latest sneak peek lately, and it looked like an AI. I've played a few FPS games in the past. The first thing I thought of is... In FPS, you're normally going to have, let's make the assumption because they're going to do it in Arena Commander, you're going to have AI V players. So my thinking was is the, the CryEngine has AI already in there. Can't they put some AI targets for us to shoot? You know, they don't have to be particularly skilled because I'm seeing this as, a, as, a, as another sort of testing ground for them, really. I think once the FPS is completed as we know it, and what I mean is, is PvP, and they'll have to go into PvE. Because at what point in this development plan are they going to do proof of concept for AI behavior, i.e. on from an FPS point of view? So I'm expecting to see at some point as well, probably a bit further on down the line, 
some new modes going into the FPS module that lever the AI characters and movement and the behavior. And the final thing on the agenda, which is actually, this, this some cracking news uh, actually what's come up. And this is the biggest probably piece of all really. And that's the, the balancement change, balancement pass that is gonna happen across the game. Currently in Arena Commander, when you're flying around, and we've all experienced it, you fly towards a ship, you fire a missile, boom, dead. Or you fly towards a ship and you shoot him a few times and in a couple of seconds, he's dead. So what they've been looking at, they've been looking at the time to death ratio, and the time to death ratio is not where they would like it to be. And now the way they explained it in, in the video was, it's like a pendulum. And I think that at the moment, that pendulum's nowhere in the middle. I think that's what they're trying to say. They're saying that it's not balanced at all at the moment. And they've made it quite clear that this next set of balance changes are gonna be significant. So we're probably gonna see something like, they didn't actually officially tell us what the time to death ratio was, but let's just say anywhere between one and five seconds, right? That's what I'm assuming and might, might be pushing 10. I think what they're looking to do is to achieve 25 to 30. They're saying 15, but I think you're going to have to have a little bit of variant. I think 15 to 25 is a good amount of time. Elite Dangerous does it quite well, actually. I mean, you're shooting the targets for quite a bit. At the moment, if you think about it in Arena Commander, we've got all these modules on the ships, but what's the point of shooting them? What's the point of shooting the engines? There's no point. What's the point of shooting the fuel line? There's not real. There's not much of a point in actually doing it in the moment because you just fire a missile and blow him up. So what's the point of taking out his coolant? And I think... Once that balancement's made and then we see these longer times to actually take out a ship, it's going to make it far better for targeting particular systems and it having a bigger effect on the ship as well. Because at the moment, there's just no time because it implodes. So I'm seeing this as a really cool thing. And one of the biggest questions always for me is what is armor in Star Citizen? Because at the moment, armor for me just doesn't seem significant enough really. To have any value and i think that with these next past that will come up which is going to be massive i think that the significance and the understanding of what armor is might be a little bit more clearer as well and the final thing on the agenda is as well guys we are ramping up in the organization as well and getting ready for the fps module so if you want to join in come and join in now the idea is is there's one thing you know hanging around until something comes out but if you come and join in now, you can get to know people inside the community and that will aid you because then once we move into the FPS, you already know who has what strengths in what particular situation. Like You might know he's a good sniper, he's a good door breacher, he's good at this and he's good at that. And I think that it's worth coming in now and building up their relationships now so when we go into the FPS, we can be strong. I'm really, really looking forward to it. The fact that RSI are saying that this is going to be a really polished launch, based on the quality that they've done before, I've never seen them being so confident about what they're going to deliver. And if a developer says that he's going to deliver something that's very polished, got every faith in them, guys. So, so looking forward to it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching the video today. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye now.